Welcome to the Birch Bioinformatics System. My name is Brian Fristensky, and today we'll take you through the process of installing Birch on a Mac. So uh, I just want to preface this by saying that you do not need admin privileges to install Birch on any system. Uh, Birch can be installed in any user account in any directory. By convention, we install it in a directory called Birch, and uh, if you're going to install Birch for uh, multiple users on the same system, probably the best thing is to create a separate account for Birch and then everybody works off of that. So the location of the Birch system is found in the dollar Birch environment variable and this tells Birch how to find uh, programs, scripts, libraries, documentation. Everything in the system is based on this environment variable. So that's just a really useful thing to know. Now, there are a number of dependencies for Birch. You need the full version of Java, either the development kit or the uh, runtime environment, but uh, you have to make sure it is not the headless version, and we'll demonstrate what that means as we go along. You also need Python 2 and Python 3, the T shell, and about 3 gigabytes of disk space. So we'll demonstrate how to verify whether you've got those things and how to get them if you don't have them. And so now let's go on to the process of doing an actual Birch install. Taking a moment just to look at what the final product should look like. So here's an already existing Birch directory uh, on the same system. And so you'll see that, uh, first of all, uh, we can install Birch in any directory we want to, uh, but if you're going to install Birch for many users on the same machine, it's probably a good idea to create a separate account for the Birch system. So here what I've done is I've created a Birch account, and then in that account, uh, if you're looking where the cursor is, there's a capital B-I-R-C-H directory, which is the contents of which we're looking at right now. So just to give you an idea of the, the uh, organization, the admin directory, um, contains uh, settings and, and parameter and so forth. The uh, uh, doc directory contains documentation. The local directory is for configuration of locally added programs. And so most of these are platform independent. They are, are uh, the same regardless of which system, Linux or, or Mac, you're, you're, you're installing Birch on. But there were two exceptions. One is the bin directory for each platform. And so in this case, we would end up, uh, or the, I should say the installer will download uh, the bin directory for Mac, which has the actual executable programs, and then also the uh, lib directory. I want to get the right button here to select that. The lib directory that, um, that uh, uh, will have libraries needed uh, to run some of the programs. So those two directories are going to be downloaded separately and installed by the installer. Everything else is downloaded uh, in the framework. And so once you've got the install done, you'll have all of these directories. So uh, let's proceed now to the process of actually doing the installation. The next thing we have to do is to um, check for the dependencies. So the first thing we'll check for is Java. Java dash version, and we see we've got Java installed. This is the runtime environment. The JDK is all right as well, but the most important thing is it shouldn't say headless. You want uh, a Java that can run the graphical interfaces, so uh, it shouldn't be headless. The next thing is Python 2, which is checked by typing Python, and we get into the Python 2 environment. 2.7 is fine. You type Control D to get out of the Python environment and then Python 3 to check for Python 3. And there we go, we've got Python 3, so we're good. The only other thing to check for is the T shell. Um, do, do it this way. If you see something like slash bin slash TCSH, then you know you've got it. So that is, uh, those are the dependencies that we need. Now we can get on to installing the uh, uh, Birch system. To do the install, we go to the Birch website at home.cc.umanitoba.ca slash tilde psgendb. You'll see that URL at the end of this video. And uh, so every Birch site will have its own uh, 
version of this this uh, this website that we're seeing here that has the documentation. If we scroll down, you'll see the Get Birch uh, symbol here, and just click on that, and that will take you to the download site. Now, notice by the way that we do have here the information on the um, dependencies, and uh, so it will take you through again just what we did before, how to check for the dependencies, but also if you don't have some of them, uh, we have some information here on how to get the different. Uh, 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 dependencies you might need. But if you've got them, we can go to the next step, which is to download the Birch installer, which is a Java jar that just downloaded. And um, so there is getbirch.jar. So we've downloaded the jar file, but in order to run it, we have to set one security setting. And so that is going to be under system preferences, privacy, and security. And then uh, in order to make that change, we unclick the lock, and so I'm going to have to authenticate to allow that. And now it will let me do it. And so um, allow apps downloaded from uh, get birch.jar was blocked because opening uh, is not from an identified developer. We can click on open anyway. And so uh, now it just gives us one more chance to decide not to do that. And so in this case, I will click on open so that get birch will start. And I'm going to have to authenticate again. Okay, so now it launches the Birch um, installer. I'll take a moment just to do that. And there is the Birch install wizard. Alt is to, <coughs> to create a new installation, which is what we want to do. And you need to put in an email address. This is primarily used just to have an email address to insert into the local copy of the Birch documentation. So that's one uh, step. And then uh, there is the option, if you were going to be updating from a previous version of Birch, you would click on this button, but we're not going to do that now. We'll go to the next step. And this is really the last thing we need to do unless you wanted to change something. For example, the install is in the current working or, or, the, or the user's home directory. Uh, in this case, user's demo uh, is the name of the account. And then uh, a, a, a directory will be created called Birch. Now, if you wanted to change that, you actually could go to the advanced install. And here is a place where you could change the name where the install is done. But usually, we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go back. And um, we're ready to do the install. So if I click on. Uh, just again, default install and finish, the installation will start. Now you'll see that we have a download monitor going that's showing us the progress of the download. That'll take five to ten minutes, so I'm going to come back when we're a little farther along. Uh, the configuration is being done. We are just about at the end of the uh, install process, and there we have it. The uh, install was complete. And you can also see a little BioLegato launcher come up. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So I'm going to click on OK. And then uh, a new uh, browser window will pop up showing our local copy. So this is your local copy of the documentation. It's on your system. And there are ways of customizing this local copy of the. As I mentioned, we want to verify that we have our working Birch system. And so one good sign, of course, is having your own uh, documentation here. You see the uh, uh, location uh, shows that this is in the demo home directory. And so this is your, you're looking at a, a local uh, copy. Uh, the next thing we want to do is just check that the terminal is working the way it should. So the next time you launch a terminal, you should see a little bit different prompt than we saw before. And so um, this is uh, uh, 
showing the user's home directory and also the machine that uh, we're logged into. So that prompt, by the way, can be changed if you want to, and we'll just mention that a little bit later. And then the most important thing, of course, is you should have the BioLegato app on your desktop. And if I double click on that, that will launch the uh, main uh, window for BioLegato. You can ignore this message. Uh, we'll, we'll just start with, with BioLegato. And, and then um, now we have the main Birch uh, uh, launcher. So this uh, launcher is able to launch the other BioLegato uh, applications that we have along with any other uh, uh, graphic programs like FastQC or the Artemis Genome Browser or the Move. Uh, genome alignment program. Uh, so we have a lot of things available through this launcher. Right now, what I want to look at is the Birch Admin tool. So this is another BioLegato application for um, changing settings and doing other administrative tasks on your Birch system. So for example, one simple thing is uh, the BioLegato applications use a lot of different helper tools. So for example, the web browser, the default web browser is Firefox. I have other possible web browsers I might use. Um, most of these should work on your Mac. Notice here that the um, the uh, system has detected that we have a copy of LibreOffice Writer, so I don't even have to set that. I can just test any of these by clicking on the test button and the program will launch a test uh, file just to show that the uh, uh, application is working and oh there we go so the application will eventually come up with the um, the uh, success message uh, in a document of some kind so uh, among other things if you wanted to change the um, uh, location of your website, make it available to the rest of the world. We have a, a tool that does that. If you wanted to change various settings right now, the only setting is do you want that custom command prompt? You can t prompt, you can turn that off at, at this, uh, uh, with this button. And then uh, if you want to update Birch to a newer version when the next version comes out. You click on Update Birch and Run, and it will launch the Get Birch uh, uh, downloader again. This time you, you would click on Update an Existing Installation, and then click on Birch because this is where it was installed, and that's uh, how you would run the update. Uh, I'm going to cancel that run right now because I don't want to do an update. We already have the latest version. Uh, this update add install menu also lets you install blast databases on your local system and we'll show that in another video as well so uh, maybe the only other thing to finish with is to mention that one of the links on your a documentation page is a link to the Birch Administrator's Guide and so the Administrator's Guide has many different uh, topics for uh, uh, customizing your web, your, your Birch site, doing things like uh, installing uh, uh, remote databases from NCBI. Uh, there are numerous things you can do and I'm not going to go into all of them here but you should be aware that uh, we have that. So that pretty much concludes what I want to say about installing Birch. You're now in a uh, position to do some serious bioinformatics and uh, I hope you enjoy using the Birch system. So that concludes our video on downloading and installing Birch and so you should be ready to uh, download and install your own copy of Birch and I just want to remind you to keep visiting our YouTube channel for new videos on uh, doing bioinformatics using Birch.